you're about to see a reenactment of what took place in the making of this film. The people you see here are professional models, but the facts and events are real. I'm at the far right. Name's Joe Carter, in charge of research on this assignment. That's uh, Jack Marshall, our boss up front. A real sharp fellow with plenty of car selling and sales managing experience and a knack for knowing what people want in cars. As Steve on the left and Bill are research engineers. These boys know cars inside out. We're about to go over the facts assembled for our project, which is to compare the 1960 Imperial, Lincoln, and Cadillac. In particular, we want to know which fine car gives the buyer more for his money and pass this information on to you. Let's get on with the meeting. Now, let's make sure we give each car due credit. After all, these three cars are the finest built in the country. So if you're going to show where one car is better than the others, have some real solid facts. You're so right. You sure is. Now, what have you boys come up with so far? Well, as you know, Jack, it's not a case of where one car is far ahead of the others in every way. Mm. It's in marginal differences. When you add up all the little, small advantages that one car comes out better than the others, it's on this basis that we want to evaluate these three cars. Uh-huh. Uh, by the way, Joe, I hear you interviewed competitive salesmen and sales managers. Yes, to find out what they're telling people about their cars and how they feel about Imperial. Uh, one thing I learned was that Imperial salesmen are using more tangible product facts to sell with than the competitive salesmen. For instance, take the Cadillac sales manager I talked to. When I asked him what was the most important feature of his car, Frankly, all I got was double talk. He said, well, after all, this is the prestige car. Everybody dreams of the day he'll own a Cadillac. Oh, oh sure. my brother. And when I asked for some facts on the quality, all he could say was, you don't need facts. Our reputation speaks for itself. It's a Cadillac, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess they do lay it on pretty thick, but... They have got a good car there, let's face it. Oh, sure they do, Jack. And I'm sure a lot of people swallow the old snob appeal. But besides that, you've got to give people some feature facts. After all, people who buy fine cars are intelligent folks who make up their minds on the basis of what they'll get out of a car. That's why the salesman has got to bring out the owner benefits his car has and the other cars don't have. You mean bring out reasons for buying the car? Sure. Take styling. You can't sell a prospect on liking it. He either does or he doesn't. That's for sure. Although Imperial salesmen say our styling sells itself and that people like it, they say the amount of change in the styling is most important in 1960. The more different it is, the more reason to buy. There's a lot that's new inside and out of the 1960 Imperial. On the other hand, Cadillac styling shows little change. Fin design is different. But grill, sheet metal, roof, just about everything else, including side chrome treatment, are almost identical with 59 styling. Mm -hmm. Some Cadillac owners are not trading this year because there's not enough reason to change. Lincoln styling shows slight differences in side chrome and roof. Bumper and grill are new, and rear styling motif has gone oval from rectangular. That's it. But. It doesn't mean all Cadillac and Lincoln owners will flock in to buy Imperial. Oh, no, of course not. But more people will be more receptive to a car that looks new. Mm. Let's write that part up. Now, did you get anything on comfort? You bet. There's more difference than you might have thought. Comfort begins with the entrance to the car. You've got to consider such things as, is it free of obstructions? And inside, is there plenty of room for comfort? Uh, Steve, give us the dope, will you? Sure will, Joe. Uh, comparing four-door hardtop models of the three cars, we found that Imperial's front entrance is four inches higher and 2.8 inches wider than Cadillac's. That much difference? You uh -huh. bet. Wouldn't think two cars in the same price class could be so far apart, would you? Uh -huh. Compared with Lincoln, our front entrance is 1.7 inches higher and 3.5 inches wider. You see, we have a lot more entrance room than either Lincoln or Cadillac. And you know, this idea of roominess is pretty important. My reports are filled with comments like these. A Lincoln salesman says, to sell against Cadillac, we talk about roominess. I sell headroom, ease of getting in and out, and legroom. And since Cadillac owners have a tough time getting in and out of back seats, I show how much easier it is to do that in my car. 
One Cadillac sales manager says, comfort's important. Although our customers complain now and then on things like headroom, overall they prefer the Cadillac. Another Cadillac sales manager admitted, roominess is our weak link. I insist my boys demonstrate in four-door models, definitely not the two doors, because we lack that headroom. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. Steve, how does Imperial compare in roominess? Imperial has more headroom, more shoulder room, more leg room, and higher seats than Cadillac. Uh-huh. Now, how about Lincoln? Well, Imperial has more leg room, more hip room, and more shoulder room. But Lincoln does have an advantage in headroom. Well, it's impressive to know Imperial has the all-round room your car. Yes, it sure is. But if comfort is such an important luxury car item, isn't there something else the salesman can show? Uh, you mean some major comfort features? Like uh, swivel seats? Yeah, that's the idea. But swivel seats aren't news anymore, Joe. Not to the salesman, Bill, but many a prospect drops into Imperial showrooms just to see swivel seats. Women think they're the best thing that ever happened in automobiles. <laughs> Remember, neither Lincoln nor Cadillac have swivel seats at any price. Another important comfort item is the Imperial seat back. Imperial's the only car on the market with six inches of solid foam rubber here. Why, it's built like an airliner seat. No cotton padding, no springs, just soft, comfortable foam rubber, and in every model. Lincoln has no foam rubber in seat backs at all. Cadillac 62 DeVilles have thin foam rubber in front construction, but no foam in the rear seat backs. Then there's Imperial's exclusive high tower seat. Three inches higher back gives the driver extra support, makes him more comfortable, keeps him alert and fresh. Even the steering wheel in Imperial is way ahead in modern design and comfort. That's a point. There's more room for sliding under the wheel, extra visibility over the wheel. The crossbar is safety padded at no extra charge. This padding is not available on the other cars. You know, one of the most dramatic Imperial comfort features is the new panelescent lighting. Oh, That's boy, you've got a real big right. point there. Yeah. It's new, revolutionary. The panel is wired so electric current passes through the phosphorescent coating and the instrument facings glow a pleasant green. No glare, no eye strain, and no bulbs to replace. That specially treated panel lasts the life of the car. Lincoln and Cadillac look old fashioned by comparison. They still use bulbs and get more glare. Another thing I wouldn't overlook is Imperial's safety padding on top and under the instrument panel. Lincoln and Cadillac pad only the top, in other words, Steve, more for the money and a more luxurious appearance, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, by the way, let's not overlook those wonderful push-button controls, one of the biggest things Imperial's got. No car, I mean no car, is so fully modern as Imperial. Okay, let's write these extra Imperial comfort advantages down. More getting in and out room, more inside room, yeah. swivel seats, Six-inch foam rubber seat backs, high tower seats, panelescent lighting, mm -hmm. push-button controls. Yeah, it's an impressive list. Yeah. Uh, performance is the next item, Jack. Mm -hmm. It's traditional for luxury cars to have extra performance to match the extra car weight. Another important thing here is the owner doesn't like to feel his car is second best to anything on the road. <laughs> so true. After all, he's paying for the best. He wants the best in performance. You can say that again. A Lincoln salesman told me the biggest problem he has in trying to sell the Imperial owners is they prefer that extra Imperial power. A Cadillac sales manager admitted Imperials have more power, but he claims power is not important anymore. <laughs> That's wishful thinking. Sure it is. According to the Red Book magazine National Survey for 1959, Cadillac owners themselves rate performance as their second biggest reason for buying that next car and their interest in performance is growing steadily. Oh, right you are. And that's why I can't understand what Lincoln has done this year. Lincoln has changed from four-barrel carburetor in 1959 to two-barrel in 60. Oh? It's the only fine car with a two-barrel carburetor. Hmm. With this change comes a reduction in horsepower and torque. Imperial has more horsepower and more torque than either Lincoln or Cadillac. With 350 horsepower compared with 315 for Lincoln and 325 for Cadillac. Imperial has 470 pound-feet of torque compared with Lincoln's 465 and Cadillac's 430. But anyway, action speaks louder than words. 
Let's see the difference. We photographed road tests of all three cars in all performance characteristics to see how much of a difference there is. Here you see the three cars lined up and getting the starting flag for a test of acceleration from a standing start. You see that Imperial takes the lead right off. At the 200 foot marker, Imperial increases its lead and the Lincoln falls back almost out of the picture. At the 500 foot marker, Imperial's way out front. Lincoln's completely out of the picture. This extra acceleration is real handy for entering fast moving expressway traffic. Here's another performance test to compare passing acceleration. Here the three cars are lined up and traveling at 25 miles per hour. At a given signal, the drivers pour on the speed. This picture shows Imperial beginning to pull away. A few seconds later, Imperial leads Cadillac over a car length and Lincoln by at least two car lengths. Plain to see the Imperial has a substantial margin in passing power. Okay, let's play performance big. And I suppose we're now ready to talk handling and ride. Right, Jack. And Imperial, with its superior torsion air suspension, has by far the best ride and performance in the industry. Actually, when it comes to boulevard riding on a smooth surface, every car handles and rides well. Sure. But then all American roads aren't smooth and perfectly straight. How about those sharp curves, rough country roads, road bumps? On these types of roads, on any kind of roads the driver may run into anywhere in the USA, Imperial really shines. Cadillac, with four coil springs, is noted for its soft ride. Wonderful on boulevards, not so wonderful on passengers and the suspension system when the going gets rough. Lincoln tried the Cadillac type four coil suspension for two years. This year it's given up the idea and returned to using coils only in front and leaf springs with Hotchkiss drive in the rear. So all three cars have different suspensions. Let's see which produces the best ride. Here's the beginning of a series of pictures showing Imperial, Lincoln, and Cadillac approaching a high humped bridge. This bridge hump represents extreme road conditions you often come across. Now you see the cars part way over the bridge. Notice how much better the Imperial's wheels keep contact with the road. Mm. Yeah. Compare this with the Lincoln and Cadillac. Now with the front wheels taking the full impact of car weight after going over the hump, no notice how much more evenly Imperial absorbs the shock of the bump. Mm -hmm. The Lincoln and Cadillac with their soft front coil springs almost bottom. After taking the hump, Imperial suspension quickly levels the car. And that's important. Sure. On Lincoln and Cadillac, the rear springs and shock absorbers are not controlling the ride. The bodies are almost scraping the road. Now let's compare lean on turns. Here you see the three cars beginning to make a sharp turn. So far, so good. But at the peak of the turn, it's a different story. See how much more lean there is on the Lincoln and Cadillac. And how? That extra lean can be mighty uncomfortable for passengers, and it reflects on the stability of the car on turns and curves. Oh, those are nice shots, Steve. You bet they are, Steve. And now, we come to Bill's specialty, quality and workmanship. Bill's done a lot of legwork comparing production methods of all three fine cars. Fine. What have you got to tell us, Bill? Well, as you know, Cadillac likes to take the lion's share of credit on quality. Naturally, we can't say Cadillac or Lincoln aren't put together well. All three fine cars are known for their high quality production. But don't let anyone tell you differently. Imperial has the most modern, most complete production facilities and quality control system in the industry. It has earned its reputation as America's most carefully built car. Every Imperial must pass a 38 zone quality control test program. Every inch of the way, step by step, test after test, Imperial has to measure up to high quality standards or back she goes to be brought up to par. And these quality tests are about the most stringent you'll find for any car built anywhere in the world. For instance, take Imperial's weld inspection. Here the inspector deliberately tries to break apart a body weld. If the weld won't hold, the body comes off the line and all production stops in this area until the situation is corrected. Nothing at Cadillac or Lincoln compares with this. These Imperial people go out of their way to find trouble. Imperial bodies must fit a master fixture to make sure dimensions are within precise limits. To assure perfect fit of doors, hood, deck lids, and all body parts, the bodies get as many as 56 such critical point checks. Every Imperial must pass a 100% water test 
after being completely assembled. Inspectors also spot check with another water test after road tests to double check against leaks. Cadillac water tests bodies before they're assembled to the chassis. Not a foolproof method. Too many chances for leaks to spring up during the process to final assembly. Lincoln has only a spot check water test after final assembly. Then there's the speedometer test. Every imperial speedometer is checked against a master unit on the roll test. It's got to be accurate or be replaced. Lincoln does this too. Mm-hmm. And what about Cadillac? Mm -mm. They just test to see if the speedometer works, but no accuracy test is made. All imperials get a 100% road test by expert test drivers. Besides that, there are spot checks. These forms show just how complete road tests are. Lincoln also road tests. Cadillac tests only a very limited number of special order models. Others get no road test at all. And here are some extra quality features few people know about. Every Imperial gets a complete factory undercoating before the chassis is attached. Mm. This way, all the crevices and underbody parts are completely coated with solid protection. Lincoln undercoats after the chassis is attached, which means quite a few spots are missed. And get this, Cadillac has no undercoating at all. Oh, that doesn't seem possible. I heard that. Now, this must be done by the dealer at extra cost. A lot of road dirt can get on that underbody between the factory and dealership. Here's another item. On Imperial, both muffler and tailpipes are aluminized. That's top-notch quality material. What you expect on a fine car. Cadillac and Lincoln have aluminized mufflers, but tailpipes are just plain steel. I'd hit that quality angle hard with the customers. Well, you know, it's quite a story you have here, Bill. Well, when you add things up, you can see that Imperial has a lot of exclusive features and quality worth talking about. I guess that's why experts in the auto business are so generous in their praise of Imperial. For example, there's McHale of Mechanics Illustrated who says, the Imperial is the best car made in America, in my opinion. On the basis of the outstanding performance, sports car handling, and the way they're put together, if you want the best car made in America, there is no other choice. Wonderful. Oh, really Quite a story. Story. Oh, yeah, use sense. that quote, Joe. You know, by golly, we've really got some good, substantial facts to work with. Uh, Joe, briefly, in what way will you line up our story with these facts? Well, we'll start off with the plain fact that fine car buyers are paying for and expect to get the very best of everything in a car. Then, with the customer benefits we've covered here, we'll want to show that Imperial offers more styling change for the 1960 model year than either Lincoln or Cadillac. More comfort features, the best performance, finest ride and handling, and extra quality. Those are things people want for their money. So, the salesman who sells those advantages can make more prospects want an Imperial. You oh, better right. Okay, right. okay fellas, get let's get this information on film in a hurry and ship it to the dealers right away. Yeah.